Okay, so coming out of high school, you enroll in the U.S. Army, mm -hmm. and you were there for three years? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Now, at one point, your mom actually goes back to Iran? Yes, she does. So it's March of 1997. My mom runs out of money in the States, hmm. and she says she's going to go back to Iran. And she says, you have two choices. Come with me back to Iran or stay here. But those are your choices. I said, I'm obviously not going back to Iran with you. I said, I figured out. So I went and stayed with my sister for a month. I want to talk to my dad. I said, hey, dad, what if I move in with you? And then he says, well, if you move in with me, you got to be home at this. Da, 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 da. I said, it's not going to work out. I'm going to give you another heart attack. So I go live with my sister, and I convince my sister to let me live with her for a month. I sell my Chevy S10 long bed with low-profile wheels and a beautiful system in the back. And for 1700 bucks, it was the owner of the car was a former MS-13 leader. The way I know this is because my dad's like an artist in San Bernardino is selling this beautiful truck that you got to buy for $2,100. I said, I'd love to meet him. I go to him, he's tatted up everywhere, MS-13. He says, what kind of an artist is he? I said, Dad, he's from Mara Sabatrucha. You know what MS-13 is. Said, this is part of a community he's from. I said, Dad, this is, this is a very different kind of a community. Dad. <laughs> and it was, I bought it for 2100 I sold it for seven. But the next day after I bought it, I got arrested in LA. There was a club in LA back in the days, Arena. If you know it, you probably don't brag about going to Arena. It wasn't a club you bragged about going to. I was 16 years old. I got arrested that night. And they thought I was part of MS-13. They kept me till three o'clock in the morning. And then they realized I'm not part of MS-13 and because the registration hadn't changed yet. Anyways, so, yeah, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm living with my sister at the time. I stay up till uh, four o'clock one night partying in the jacuzzi downstairs with a bunch of my friends. I come up, she's like, I'm about to get evicted. What'd you do? Landlord's upset. I said, I'm gonna figure it out, Paulette. I go outside to get my car, Chevy S10, uh, the uh, uh, Toyota Corolla 83 that my mother had left me when she went back to Iran. Uh, I can't find a car. Where's this car? I'm walking around. Like, am I drunk? Did I forget where I parked it? I'm walking around. I like, no, I can't find it. Call the police. Ripple police comes. They're looking everywhere. Are you sure you parked this? I'm telling you, I parked it here. Anyways, they found a few months later in Tijuana. But I called my dad. I said, Dad, come pick me up. Take me to the recruiting station. He comes, picks me up. I go to the recruiting station. I meet with the recruiter, Jesus Guerrera, who recruited me at 14 years old, saying you should join the army, but I didn't do it for four more years. I said, if you can get me to go to the army tomorrow, I'm in. And uh, long story short, he says, we can't. I said, uh, I'm not joining. Two weeks later, I'm in South Carolina, Fort Jackson. And uh, I called my mom. I had a 30-second call. I said, mom, he says, what's up? I said, I'm in South Carolina. What are you doing in South Carolina? I said, I joined the army. She says, we escaped Iran, so you wouldn't join the Iranian army, now you join the U.S. <laughs> army? I said, yes. I got to go, Mom. There's 20 people behind me. Boom. You know. So you do the army thing for yep. three years, and then you go to Santa Monica College. Yes. For not very long. No, two semesters. Two semesters. One and a half semester. <laughs> then you drop out. Then I drop out. So what do you do next? So I went to Santa Monica Community College because Arnold was my hero at the time. And he went to Santa Monica Community College. So I was going to go, you know, be a bodybuilder, Mr. Olympia, Mary Kennedy, be a governor, be a Hollywood star. That's kind of what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. But then while I'm going there, I start working at Bally's. And then I get opportunities to go to this biggest club, to, to the biggest club Hollywood had. Uh, Bally's had at Hollywood El Centro, 43,000 score for club, beautiful club. And they gave me this job. So I go there. Then I performed and they moved me to Chatsworth Bally's. And I said, I'm done with Santa Monica. Going from Chatsworth Valleys to Santa Monica is a long drive. And I said, I'm done. And then I meet a girl named jean Vier at Venice Beach who worked at Morgan Stanley Dean. Where we start dating. And she picks me up in all these nice cars all the time. I said, what do you do for a living? How do you make this kind of money at 24 years old to have these cars? She says, I work at Morgan Stanley Dean with her as a broker, financial advisor. Then I get my job at Morgan Stanley Dean with her about, you know, day before 9-11. And then obviously I stayed in the industry for 20 plus years. Okay, so you start at Morgan Stanley, you go to Transamerica at one point? Yeah, so I'm at Morgan Stanley for a, a year. Mm -hmm. Then I go to Transamerica World Financial Group for seven and a half years, and then I start my own company. That's in 2009. That's in 2002. April 15th, 02 is when I go to Transamerica. 2009, September 23rd is when I start my own insurance company. Exactly, PHP agency. Yes. Tell me what that is. PHP Agency is a financial marketing organization selling life insurance and annuities. Uh, we started off with 66 agents. 
and we grew to 45,000 agents in 200 plus states and 200 uh, plus offices, 49 states. And we just recently sold the company a year and a half ago to Integrity Marketing Group. And uh, the money came from Silver Lake. But yeah, I was excited. We went from one office to a few hundred offices nationwide. Okay, so what exactly do you guys do? So we, uh, so say for example, I meet him, okay? And I say, so what do you do? I'm doing X, Y, Z. Are you happy with your job? Not really. How much money are you making? 80 grand a year. Uh, what are your dreams? I want to have a house. I want to send my kids to private school. What kind of money do you need to make to do that? Quarter million dollars a year. How soon is, you know, Vlad going to pay you 250 to be able to do that? Not anytime soon. What are you going to do? Stay here? You want your dreams to become a reality? I want to do something big. Great. Why don't you get an insurance license part-time? I'm going to teach you how to sell the product. And then from there, maybe you make $1,000, 2000 $3,000 a month part-time. And then if you later on get good at it, you can go full-time. Then maybe you can become a broker. That's pretty much what we do. So you sell insurance, life insurance, and other types of insurance as well? L not, not auto insurance. It's strictly life insurance. Strictly life insurance. Life insurance and annuities. I used to be Series 7, 66, 31, and 26, where I could sell stocks, bonds, mutual funds, commodities, futures. But in PHP, it was only insurance and annuities. Okay, and PHP stands for people helping people. Yes. Okay, now, selling life insurance is a very old business in America. And you very guys, hard. You guys did not come, you know, you're not the first, you know, <laughs> the yeah. first to do this. How was it you differentiated your company from all of the established companies that have been doing this for probably 100 plus years? That's a great question. So here's what I did. When I was, at the time when I was working at uh, Bally's, I sucked in my first month in sales. A month later, I'm about to go back into the army and Cisco, my boss, he says, before you quit, go, sells go sell memberships at Fox Hills Mall. I said, I can't sell memberships in the gym. You want me to sell gym memberships at a mall? He said, just trust me. Go there. You're going to work with a couple of guys. These are professional hustlers. You're going to learn. I said, great. I don't know if you're familiar with Fox Hills Mall. So I go to Fox Hills Mall. Yeah, it's Hills in Inglewood, right? It's in Inglewood. Yeah. It's like right by, uh, yes. So I go to Fox Hills Mall and... A day later, two days later, a week later, I sell my first membership to a girl, $75, down $30 a month. I can't believe she's giving me a credit card in a mall to sign a 36-month contract. Hmm. Then I sell my second, third, fourth, fifth. Then I become the rookie of the month. And so then I realize I can sell. So then the question is, am I going to sell memberships for the rest of my life? What product do I want to sell? The good news was I worked under a couple of guys that were very good in sales, so they taught me good habits. Cisco was a professional at Bally's. Dexter was charming. Ruben was systematic. Joe Reyes asked the right question. Molina was great on the phones. I'm watching everybody to kind of learn how to get better at this. And then afterwards, uh, I'm looking at all the industries. I'm like, am I going to do real estate? Am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? And then I chose financial industry. So the part about PHP that differentiated us than everybody else is, while I'm at Transamerica, I'm watching what's going on with elections. I'm watching what's going on with social media. In 2004, if you remember, Ron Paul in his 60s raised $6 million in 24 hours on MySpace running for office. Hmm. I'm like, six million. It was a record breaking uh, number. Nobody could believe an independent guy raising $6 million in 24 hours on MySpace. Then I saw Obama come in, gives his speech at the DNC. And a one-term senator becomes a two-term president. And his first campaign, he raised money from a bunch of Hispanics, $5, $10 Facebook ads. He was the first guy that understood the part of the Hispanic vote. And then everything was about woman power, women boss, girl boss, girls in business, entrepreneurship. Then a data came out showing me that for every dollar that's made, 75 cents of the decisions made by women, more than 25, mm -hmm. because they're the ones that's going out there doing most of the shopping. So... You're thinking, who's pulling out the decision? So then when I saw all of that stuff, and I read a book called Blue Ocean Strategy. I don't know if you've read it. Fantastic book. In Blue Ocean Strategy, it explains how the whole concept is that most people are in a red ocean. For example, let's look at the podcast side. Mm -hmm. How many, who was the first person interviewing hip hoppers that got as big as you did? That got as big as me? As big as you. I don't know if I can think of anybody. You may I say mean, Charlemagne. Charlemagne, yeah, I was okay. going to mention Charlemagne. He kind of came up around. But it's really the, same the time. two of you guys. Yeah, and he was working under the Breakfast Club. So, so watch this now. Yeah. So you guys have a blue ocean. Everybody else is trying to do what you guys are doing. They're now in a red ocean. It's too late. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You've dominated the marketplace. You have a big edge. Now, if you don't recreate yourself and improve, new guy can come up. But yeah. the whole concept about Blue Ocean strategy is don't directly compete with somebody. Find a way to differentiate yourself from other people. And the formula is actually very simple. Increase something others are not doing. Decrease something everybody else is doing. Eliminate what everybody else is doing and create something new that nobody else is doing. So for us, I looked at this and I said, here's what we're going to do. One, we're going to target women as insurance agents, because at the time, the out of 100 agents, only 17% were women. Insurance mm. industry didn't recruit women. Okay. They recruited men. 83% were men. Then a report came out from Limra saying the average insurance agent was a 56-year-old white male. 56-year-old white male. Wait a minute. The biggest generation is boomers, but millennials are big. Why are we not targeting this interesting? So maybe the insurance industry was dying because their agents were going lower. They went from having a half a million agents to like 200,000 agents. People were leaving the industry. So I said, perfect. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring young girls and I'm going to target uh, minorities, minorities kind of like myself. So Hispanics, African-Americans, and then we'll compete in a marketplace from an angle where if I go to a house, if I'm selling you and your wife, your wife may not like me. She's done. She's not going to buy you and I may hit it off, but she may be like, babe, I don't trust this guy. When she walks over to the bathroom, I need to text you, go over there. But if a girl comes to your house to sell, she's going to be like, oh, I understand her because she's a wife like, because she's a mom like me. And you're going to want to buy from a woman maybe more than you're going to want to buy from a man. So we went that angle. And then the average agent today is a 34-year-old Hispanic female in the company. 51% huh. of our company are women. 54% are Hispanic. We're the, we're the largest percentage of that in the marketplace. And that was our advantage. That was our edge. Obviously, social media helped because at the time, nobody wanted to touch social media. So that was the advantage we saw as a differentiator. And then by the time we had already taken off, everybody tried to copy us. It was already too late. I love it. I love it. 